I can't tell you how excited I am to see you hold up this card. This card was created by the sisters in October of 2010. It was created as a symbol to stop the violence. It started with the teen suicides and generated into the attacks of the Castro in our very own neighborhood. It's a sign that we're letting the world know we will not tolerate violence. We will not tolerate hate. Today, every single one of you has a card. We paid for these cards. They're expensive. So you know what that means? That means that every single one of you is going to treasure this card. You're going to take it home. You're going to put it in your window. You're going to put it at your job. You're going to put it wherever you feel it will get the most visibility. Because we want to send a message, not only to David, but to every single oppressor out there that we will not tolerate violence. Now I want every single person to join me because today we're here for two specific reasons. I have the honor of bestowing a blessing on David Cato's spirit. My sister, Sister Morley Decline, has the honor of declaring David a saint. But we want David to see what we're doing here today. So I want the press, the world, and everyone to see these signs. I want all of you to hold them up and call to David. Reach out to his soul. David, we ask that just for one moment you part from the company of the angels you now find yourself with. Please look down on us mere mortals that you love so much. Forgive us our trespasses against you. Bless us. Please accept our humble love that we raised up to you today, David. Please bless those left to fight today, tomorrow and on, till this battle is won, and it will be won. We offer your soul a blessing from this, your Mother Earth. We pray you find peace, love, and rest. May there be peace within you today, David. You are not forgotten, David Cato. We offer you our energy that you may move on now in peace. Your battle is fought. Now it is our turn to follow in your steps. May the great creator guide you to better pastures. May that power that is within us all embrace you and show you peace. Soar through the universe, David, that is so waiting to embrace you. Look not back at these days, David, for if 1,000 years is like a day to our Lord and creator, then tomorrow you will see that your life was not in vain. On behalf of the Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence, the heavens above, the world that you lost, that lost your beauty, everyone gathered here today, we bless you, David Cato. Rest in peace. Blessed be. Blessed be. Blessed be, David Cato. Blessed be, David Cato. Blessed be. Blessed be. Rest in peace. Rest in peace. Now yell it out. Amen. Amen. Our women. And all the rest. And all the rest. As a gay community, we have some amazing opportunities, some amazing advantages, and some truly unique challenges that we face on a day-to-day -day basis. When the rash of recent violence against our community stuck its head into our world, the sisters with our wonderful community partners rallied together. We banded together to educate each and every one of us here, but also to provide a safe, supportive environment so that we could walk down the street without fear. Tonight, we come together to Otter One, who strove to do just that in a much harsher climate than we could ever imagine. When the Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence see a member of our worldwide community, whether that's locally or abroad, who works so tirelessly, sacrificing everything for the good of our worldwide LGBTQ community, what can we do but recognize their valor, their spirit, their very soul? It is my honor as mistress of the saints, uh, as mistress of saints of the Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence, to read this proclamation. And one thing I do want to say that you know, anybody who knows the sisters knows that the sisters are made up of many backgrounds, many faiths, many beliefs. So when we talk about sainting someone within our worldwide community, we're really calling them our champion, somebody who has shown so brightly that they deserve the honor that we are about to give them. David Cato, this is for you. Absolutely, totally, and universally administered by the Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence, Inc., the Sisters hereby forever proclaim David Cato, Saint Omunto Omizira, 
which in Lagundan means brave person, for upholding and promoting the ideals, beliefs, and convictions held sacred by the order, for creating positive changes in our world by honoring the mind, the body, and the spirit, for perpetually dedicating untold hours of freely expended energy in service to the order and to the community, for promulgating universal joy and expiating stigmatic guilt everywhere you've gone. And be it decreed that from this day forward, your spirit shall be held in the arms of the goddess who knows all and comforts all. Your good work shall be remembered in honor and in perpetuity. You shall forever stand as a pillar of strength in the community. You are hereby perpetually allied with the Order of the Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence, Inc. Therefore, sainthood is forever proclaimed on this honorable day, February 3rd, 2011, in the presence of the community and the Order of the Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence, Inc. Amen, all women, and all the rest. In the words of a great civil rights activist, he said, until all of us are free, none of us are free. Until all of us have the opportunity to live in freedom and to declare who we are as the beloved of God, then none of us are free. That's why we're all here, because we recognize that Stephen Cato's courage, Stephen Cato's determination to live his life authentically as who he was, who he was created to be, touches our hearts and touches our souls. He was determined that he would not be silent. We are committed not to be silent. I just got off a, a conference call with the MCC Global Justice Committee and we were speaking with a woman who is attending seminary in the United States who walked with Stephen Cato in Uganda. She was so filled with grief that she could almost not speak, but her words were, Stephen would not be silenced and we cannot let his voice be silenced by death. And we shall not allow his voice to be silenced. As long as one of us can say, there is more that unites us, that could ever keep us apart. His memory will be alive, his work will be kept alive, and all that he was passionate about will be kept alive. We say this day, we will stop the violence, we will stop the hate by embracing love and embracing peace. Let peace begin with each one of us. God bless you. The worst violence comes when a government institutionalizes hate into law. The Ugandan government is about to do just that, and we cannot allow that to happen. Just last week, just over a week ago, there was a woman in the United Kingdom by the name of Brenda Namagadi. Brenda Namagadi was accidentally not put on her plane for deportation back to Uganda, a known lesbian. When we found out, we wrote a story about it. And after we wrote the story about it, I got one of the most sinister phone calls I've ever had in my life. And that was a phone call from David Bahati, the author of the bill, the anti-gay, kill the gays bill. And David Bahati called me and he said, I know you're working with Brenda Namagadi and I have a message to give her. She will be safe if she comes back to Uganda. He told me, and I said, and what if, what if she gets arrested because you call lesbians criminals in Uganda, even before this new bill of yours, Mr. Bahati? And you know what he said? He said she will be safe if she repents. And he said she will be safe if she denounces homosexuality. And he said to me, she will be safe if she does not continue that behavior. And what he didn't know was that with those words, he was actually helping Brenda Namagadi's case. Because the UK did not want to believe that she's a lesbian. She has to prove it to them that she's a lesbian so she's not deported. And her case is coming up on Monday. We managed to get her off the aeroplane a second time just before it was about to take off. Irony, in Uganda she has to prove that she's not a lesbian now and in the UK she has to prove that she is a lesbian. What the hell is going on? Ladies, 
gentlemen and everybody here tonight, this is really, really important. We must stop the violence, and the violence is in our government. Our violence is happening when we send people seeking asylum back to countries like Uganda. And now I have a message for David Bahati and for, G and for Giles Mahume, who is the man in the Rolling Stone magazine who put, da who put David Carto's face on the cover of that magazine. And I have a message for you, Mr. Bahati. We will stop the violence. It will not happen. We will stop the violence. No more gays. No more lesbians and no more transgender people, queer identified, will be killed in your country if we have anything to do with it. 18 hours after he called me, 18 hours, David Carter was dead. I want to call your attention to the posters we put up here. They reference to the Rolling Stone newspaper, uh, no, no similarity to the magazine has an image of David Cato's picture on the cover and a cut line saying, hang them. The connection between the media and politicians, government people, religious right, any kind of nut out there that tries to condemn another human being, it makes a difference. Language makes a difference. Uh, how you raise your children makes a difference. As I was making some of these posters just now, I saw a woman with a, a baby in a stroller, and she said, what's that, mommy? And she said, they're teaching people to be kind to each other. What a beautiful thing to overhear in Harvey Milk Plaza. That's what we're doing. But as the previous speaker mentioned, this newspaper and the people involved with it are responsible for the 100 names that they published. There's no doubt about it. There's a link. There's a link when Sarah Palin puts crosshairs on her media messages about who to go after and who the quote-unquote target is. The flyer that I'm holding is very important to me because I believe in accountability and Lord knows I hope I believe in karma. It says blood on their hands. Ugandan MP David Bahati, who introduced in 2009 the anti-homosexuality bill, a legislative proposal designed to criminalize any advocacy or support for LGBT people and to punish homosexual conduct with the death penalty under certain circumstances. The bill was promoted by United States evangelical Christian leaders including Scott Lively, John Schmierer, and Caleb Lee Brundage, who met with Ugandan parliamentarians and advocated for increased strictures against homosexuality while preaching in Uganda in early 2009. The organization, The Family, a highly secretive United States-based religious and political organization, get this, founded in 1935 and led by Douglas Coe, is connected to the authors of this legislation. So while we lower the flag in honor of David Cato and his spirit, it's important that we hold accountable and connect the dots as to why hate happens. You're not born to hate. You're not born with prejudice. You're taught it from your surroundings, from your schools, your parents, your government. And I'm just going to close with, I think it's ironic. Sometimes I never met David Cato. He doesn't know me. You wonder, why does this matter? The irony for me is, as I was putting up the posters, the one I had left that I thought, well, I'll hold this one, is the one I cut my finger on. So I now have blood on my hands. But it reminds me, everybody here, we all bleed red. That's the commonality. We're one human race. No one has the right to judge or oppress or harm or torture or demean any other human being. And that's why Gays Without Borders exist. We bring attention and awareness and action, and we do have an impact. So thank you, everybody, for being here. Don't ever give up the fight, even if you're the only one standing here in the name of somebody who was harmed. Stand up and say, stop the violence. Thank you.